Hello, my name is uh, Maarten Grachten. Uh, the work I present uh, today is done with my co-worker Emmanuel Deruti at uh, Sony Computer Science Lab Laboratories in Paris. And the title of the talk is uh, Melatonin, a case study on AI-induced musical style, um, a title that will become clear in the next slide, I hope. So I, uh, AI tools for uh, music production are uh, kind of in recent years beginning to emerge. Uh, artists are starting to experiment with them, uh, but they're not really established practices yet. And it's also not really clear, there's no clear vision on, on what these tools can mean to artists. Um, so that's why we believe, and I think this is a general understanding, that AI tools, for, for AI to, to be uh, successful in music production, um, that's to make it uh, successful is really a joint endeavor between researchers uh, or engineers and music artists. Um, so this current work is uh, aims to work uh, towards that goal uh, by way of a case study of, of a song, Melatonin, uh, that was produced with the help of AI tools in collaboration uh, with professional artists and AI researchers. So the overview of the talk is um, like this. Uh, first, I will talk a little bit about uh, partners, aims, and uh, AI tools used in the collaboration. Uh, then uh, I will talk about uh, uh, present and uh, the results and um, discuss uh, Kind of our analysis of these results and I will uh, conclude with uh, some uh, uh, closing remarks. So the collaboration partners. Um, uh, the artists uh, that worked here were Hypermusic, uh, a commercial music production duo that creates uh, typically an, a rather eclectic mix of pop, rock, electronic and urban music. Um, and they produce songs for uh, really famous artists like Celine Dion, but also for feature films, uh, TV or Netflix series and commercials. Um, and um, so the um, AI part of the collaboration that was uh, us, basically, uh, the Sony CSL Paris music team, uh, more specifically uh, myself and Emmanuel. And uh, the, the mission of the CSL uh, music team is to develop AI tools for music artists, uh, either to boost or to enhance their creativity or to help them with tasks like audio processing and mastering. Uh, so be, besides this current uh, collaboration that I will talk about, their uh, CSL uh, has several other long-term collaborations with artists and uh, some of these artists are already uh, releasing music uh, that they made using CSL AI tools. So the aims of the collaboration were uh, like this. Uh, the, the aim was to produce two songs uh, in which there was a dedicated role for the AI tools. Um, and rather than kind of uh, having the artists kind of free will and experiment uh, at will with the tools, we we thought it's the most useful to for them to stick with more or less the usual setting, like contemporary con uh, popular music. Um, uh, uh, so that's that's what they're used to do and that what, what we would like them to do with our AI tools. Um, so there were multiple AI tools available to them, but there was a em strong emphasis on BaseNet, uh, one specific AI tool that I will talk about in a minute. Um, the idea was to do this collaboration uh, uh, mostly in a, in a four-day joint session where both the artists and the researchers were present. And the reason for this is that we thought that would uh, be the best way to exploit opportunities to ad adapt the AI tool or BaseNet to suit uh, the needs of the artist. Um, so BaseNet, what is it? Uh, we we uh, used to call it a tool to create, to generate bass lines, um, but uh, throughout kind of the usage uh, through by the artist, uh, we've come to think of it uh, more of a, as, a, as a conditional bass synthesizer. Um, I think that will become clearer uh, throughout the talk. 
Um, what it is, it's, it's a, a neural network trained on pop and rock songs that learns the relationship between bass lines and uh, the rest of the music. Um, and it does so by organizing kind of the, the different ways in which the bass, line, the bass lines can be played along with the uh, specific mix, uh, organizing those in a, in a Latin space, two-dimensional uh, plane. Uh, and the idea is that then for new pieces or a new, some, if you have some input audio, you uh, can play around with a latent position to create a variation, multiple variations of bass lines. Um, this is what the this is what the network structure looks like. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into details here, but uh, the important thing is, I guess, to uh, to note that the output of the model, if you give it an input, um, is uh, together with the latent space, is to, that it outputs a CQT spectrogram from which it infers a continuous F0 level and onset curves. And those are then used to create the actual baseline, either in MIDI, but also a kind of a, a sonific audio sonification of it. Mm, here's a very quick video demo that I will skip through to save time. Um, this is a, a web interface where you see the two-dimensional plane here. And if you move the point um, across the space, you'll get different bass lines. Uh, so here, here the, the input is just the drums. And if you move the point, you get different bass lines. So that's that. Um, uh, so I come to the presentation of the and analysis of the results now. Um, so the production strategy in this uh, kind of music production session uh, was like this. Um, before the session, uh, in advance, uh, Hyper Music produced some basic material that could be used uh, kind of as the basis for the song and also as input for BassNet. So they had the, some of the audio that they prepared in their digital audio workstation session, and they uh, uh, moved that into BassNet, got outputs, um, that they processed with several plugins that they're as you would uh, kind of normally do uh, with uh, kind of a recorded baseline and then they imported that into the DAW session again and sometimes the generated material from BaseNet again was uh, used as input for further bass tracks. Uh, so as soon as uh, Hyper Music started uh, with with uh, the session Kind of they, they, there was a, they noted the problem that if the kind of the goal was f uh, for the AI outputs to take a prominent place in the mix, that sh sound should be kind of rich and interesting. Uh, um, but BaseNet's sonification method at that time was rather simplistic. It was just additive synthesis of harmonic sine waves, um, uh, and the sound it could sound a little bit dull at times. Uh, so that's they they didn't. Th Think that was too appropriate or too useful as a, as a, as the main part of the song. Um, so, following their suggestions, uh, we added some sonification controls during the session uh, that were relatively easy to make uh, because they only uh, concerned the sonification. Uh, specifically, it was portamento, odd even harmonic balance to modify the timbre, and some temporal harmonic variation. I can I can go into the details in the QA session afterwards. Um, so with those changes, they were quite happy with uh, the results they got with BaseNet and they got started. So as I said, they, they basically had this uh, overall production strategy and uh, kind of this is a schematic representation and uh, the song, which consists of two sections, the, the first section had this specific, they followed this specific workflow where they, uh, where you see, for example, sample here, vocal samples, uh, manual chords, um, here, manual chords, a drum loop here. Uh, that was the existing material. They passed that through base net in several kind of uh, configurations to create a multitude of different base parts. 
uh, and the output of basin was sometimes uh, passed through another uh, CSL prototype that changed the timer uh, or, or some uh, uh, pitch shifting in guitar or equalization. Um, so you see that uh, the way they used the tool was to create really a very um, layered um, structure for the bass. This is here you see uh, the, the output for this section of the song, I, uh, kind of a transcription of the output. I can play it here. I, um, I will skip a bit. So all of this is base net kind of a material produced by base net based on the existing material. Um, they uh, so in in the next uh, so this is uh, the same workflow for section two. You see here they they took this approach uh, of lay of kind of creating multiple variations of a single idea. Uh, they took it one step further. They in addition to a choir loop and a uh, drums. They even added a very simple bass line uh, that they edited themselves. Uh, it sounds like this. So this was the basis and uh, together with the drums and the choir they produced variations of this uh, using bass net that all of them together uh, kind of layered as they are in the song. It sounds like this. Oops, sorry. further on so you again you see a, a layering of multiple sounds um, the the final result of the songs like this I can't play it entirely but I was skipped through some parts. Basically, most of what you hear here is actually bass net, um, uh, along with the drums and uh, some uh, chords and vocals. Um, so now I come to the uh, a kind of brief analysis in terms of musical style. But before that, I want to really briefly uh, introduce the notion of musical style, so so we know what to look for in the music. Um, well, so music instruments and technology play a really important uh, role in musical style. And the manifestations of musical style, as uh, identified by Pascal, can be roughly classified on the one hand into sound, uh, like traditional instruments, as well as electronic technology, like synthesizers, sound effects. Uh, uh, you can think of the auto-tune effect uh, recently. Uh, they have really strong, a kind of a recognizable and unique sound that um, determines what the music is like. Uh, that's that's uh, quite obvious, but uh, beyond the sound, uh, the, the instruments and technology can also, uh, kind of through their possibilities and limitations, lead to distinctive musical patterns in the, in this, in the music <clears throat> that are not just sound. Uh, I think the clearest example is uh, um, the clearest example is uh, jazz bebop, uh, where you hear these uh, very uh, fast uh, melodies that are uh, really the result of, uh, of, of the, what musicians could do with saxophone and trumpet. Uh, uh, that's, that's a clear idiom that, uh, induced by the instruments. So here, uh, when we uh, look at these bass lines, I think a clear uh, example of the uh, idiom from the from the tool is uh, the 
the texture, a heterophonic texture that we see in the, by the layering of the bass lines. Uh, here you, you hear uh, uh, an example. And another example. So heterophony, I kind of define more as a simultaneous variations of a single melody. You see that uh, uh, exemplified here, uh, where the, the they really sound as a kind of a, together as a uh, as a whole, but at the same time you you hear the variations. Um, so that's the, due to the uh, the way uh, the artist created several variations using the different Latin positions of the tool and layering them on top of each other. Um, but uh, if we look at the sound uh, of individual bass parts, uh, it's, there's, it's also interesting to see what's happening because uh, this, this uh, heterophonic uh, or kind of uh, having multiple pitches at the same time uh, by the layering, it's, it's not just by the layering, even inside a single uh, track, you sometimes hear uh, multiple pitches. <laughs> So it turns out that the overtone structure that is generated by this uh, kind of uh, sonification strategy based on the predicted CQT spectrogram uh, is uh, sometimes uh, such that it creates a sensation of two simultaneous pitches. We have in the supplementary material, we have a, uh, an analysis, spectral analysis of that to support that claim. Um, I have some further examples of this, but that I, I think I will skip those. And then I come to the conclusion. Um, so we have described in this work uh, some stylistic characteristics of the produced song uh, that we think can be clearly linked to the characteristics of the AI tool. Uh, and these uh, character stylistic characteristics are both in terms of the idiom and the sound. Uh, so the char characteristics like heterophony uh, and this uh, multiple pitch sensation are not novel in themselves, but uh, what is novel uh, is the way they have been produced uh, in, in by this AI tool. So the heterophonic textures are created really by varying the latent control of bassnet using the same input audio and the sound, um, uh, the kind of the multiple pitches are really uh, come from the overtone structure from of the predicted CQT that was inferred from the input audio, rather than by post-processing or using uh, sound effects. Um, and I think we this this analysis also highlights that there's not always a strict separation of, of uh, music musical characteristics like harmony and texture on the one hand and the sonic characteristics like timbre on the other hand. And I think it's interesting for AI tools to see if they can uh work on this middle ground uh, where I think that is uh, that's an interesting uh, domain for artists to work with. So that concludes my talk and I thank you very much for your patience. <laughs>